It's been one day since the House of Representatives was officially called for the Republicans, and already we're seeing the shambolic mess that's in store. In their efforts to retake the House, you heard Republicans beating the drums about crime, inflation, and gas prices. And you'd think that they'd address at least one of those things as their first order of business. But oh no, with the MAGA inmates running the asylum, we are seeing what the next two years in the House will be about. Here are the incoming chairs of the Oversight and Judiciary Committees. I want to be clear. This is an investigation of Joe Biden, and that's where the committee will focus in this next Congress. So this is to focus on the Judiciary Committee, the political nature at the Justice Department, and the linkage now to what was happening with the Hunter Biden story, again, just 15 days before we have a presidential election. Uh, yes, yes. Forget all those issues that we told you about that actually impact Americans' daily lives. Hunter Biden's laptop is paramount. And of course, it will be followed by the crucial investigations about the origins of COVID-19, Nancy Pelosi and the DOJ's handling of the January 6th insurrectionists and migrants at our southern border. And then there are the growing calls for many in the MAGA caucus looking to impeach President Biden. Attorney General Merrick Garland, too, and Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas for something we'll tell you about later. I mean, we don't know. You got me. What is it for? But why does there need to be a reason other than to try to own the libs and get retribution for their twice impeached orange leader? Perhaps if a competent Republican speaker was about to take office, things would be different. But sadly, that role will likely be held by the person Donald Trump refers to as my Kevin. Let's just be really clear. Even if Kevin McCarthy is able to cobble together enough support from all the fringes of his caucus, he's nothing more than a marionette controlled by the strings of the, controlled by the strings by the hand standing by the guy standing next to him. We have seen when it comes to standing tall as the leader of his caucus, Kevin has a penchant to turn tail and run. It was the same earlier this year when reporters tried to ask him to respond to the RNC declaring that the January 6th attack on the Capitol was legitimate political discourse. Run, Kevin, run. None of this should be, should be a surprise to the Democrats. But the real question for them is how to navigate this new reality. Kurt Bardella, the former spokesperson and senior advisor for Republicans on the House Oversight Committee back in the day, who's now an advisor to the DNC, writes in The Atlantic, Democrats must now answer the call and elevate their best communicators. After all, the number one mission of the Democratic minority should be communications. Obvious candidates for the top jobs on oversight and judiciary include Jamie Raskin and David Cicilline. And Kurt Bargella joins me now, along with Charles Blow, New York Times columnist and MSNBC political analyst. I'm going to start with you, Kurt, because you wrote the, art the article. You've seen what it looks like when Republicans go wild on oversight. And that is going to be the committee where all the crazy is going to take place. What should Democrats do? They need to match up. You know, back in 2010, when Republicans took back Congress after that election, Democrats actually realized they were in some deep water. They knew that they needed to make a change. So they ditched the seniority system. They benched Ed Towns, who was a ranking Democrat at the time, and replaced him with a guy named Elijah Cummings. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, us at the Oversight Committee of Republicans, we, we were not happy about this. Yeah. We were, we, Cummings was a brilliant tactician, an amazing communicator, and we knew that he could get the best of us, that he could win on that dais on those hearings. Well, now here we are in a similar situation, and there's a, there's a competition right now for who's going to lead the Oversight Committee. Is it going to be Jamie Raskin? Is it going to be someone like Jerry Connolly or Stephen Lynch? Democrats need to put forward the best person for the job who knows how to fight these moderate Republicans. And in my opinion, Jamie Raskin is the best person we could have leading the Oversight Committee. Same thing at Judiciary Committee. And, and nothing against Jerry Nadler, who's mm -hmm. led the committee very well for a long time. But I think this is the time where we need to reset. Someone like David Cicilline, a fighter, a brawler, someone who knows that we are going to be in a street fight against the Jim Jordans, against the Comers, against the Marjorie Taylor Greens, who's angling to get on the Oversight Committee. <laughs> we know Kevin McCarthy cannot control these people. Yeah. We know, as, as Oscar Wilde once said, when the gods wish to punish us, they answer our prayers. Well, Kevin's about to find out what that's like. <laughs> he's going to be living in hell. <laughs> if he ain't drinking now, he's going to be drinking. Uh, Charles, let me get you in here, because uh, let me just show you a collage. This is the House Republican. This is their official 
their official Twitter account, which we know Twitter is, is at this point an anemic sort of you know dying monster. But they tweeted this: Hunter Biden's laptop is real. Joe Biden is the big guy. The Biden crime family must be investigated. It's about that security. Like they're freaking out. They, I mean, the vast majority of Americans couldn't pick Hunter Biden out of a lineup. They don't care about him. He's a, he's a, he's a, he, in a lot of ways, he's a tragic figure. I mean, this is someone who had dealing with addiction and was dealing with a lot of personal issues. If, if anything, what you know about him makes you feel bad for him. And they've decided to turn him into their new Hillary Clinton, right, their obsession. We had this conversation, you know, just among the team earlier. Give us some advice, Charles Blow. You're an intellectual giant of the, of the uh, journalistic world. How should we deal with this? Because part of me wants to ignore it, Part of me wants to laugh at it. I'm in between those two. Uh, what do you think we as the media should be doing with all these ridiculous investigations to come? Well, well I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay on the politicians first before we get to the media. Okay. You know, I, I actually believe that the, the best strategy here is to stay on policy and to, to, to let them put on a show and to c tell Americans constantly that it's a show. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, you know, it is very hard for them to make the case that that Hunter Biden is uh, did something wrong and benefited from the family name when in every one of the Trumps did exactly that. So it doesn't help them in their argument as much as it would someone who had not who was not running against Donald Trump and that seems like it's going to be the matchup in 2024 and all of this is theatrics and blowing of smoke and fishing to try to damage Joe Biden for 2024 that's what the entire exercise is about so i don't think it works as well they could have had you know if they were not going to stick on the crime and inflation numbers and more stick more to what Trump you know uh, did in 2016 which is uh, demonize people, right? <laughs> you know, uh, talk about crime so, and, and evoke black people and immigrants. Talk about the border that they, they are coming to replace. That actually was a more effective strategy. And with the new leadership that's coming in uh, in the House, it would actually they would get they would have people to point to. You know, this is just you know devil's advocate. It's not what I would want to do, but that that <laughs> actually works for that base. This thing, you know, of trying to make this person, uh, uh, Hunter Biden, into some giant boogeyman <laughs> in charge of a giant conspiracy to get all the money from all the foreign leaders and, and foreign companies, it just doesn't land. It doesn't have a victim uh, in the same way that Benghazi had real victims. And e even if Hillary Clinton wasn't responsible for it, you could have a family come forward and say, you know, I, I'm hurting and I want more answers. And that helps pro to propel that narrative. They don't have that here. So it just becomes a very hard sell to the American people, I believe. Yeah, and I mean, the only person who was hurt by the Benghazi hearings was Kevin McCarthy. He got chased out of his first attempt to become speaker because he blabbed that the whole purpose, he, he gave away the whole thing like a Scooby-Doo villain and said, <laughs> you know, this Benghazi thing is going to destroy Hillary Clinton. She won't be able to run for president. Everybody was like, you're too stupid to be speaker. Go away. <laughs> 